I've got a story that I'd like to read y'all. I like a good story, and this is a good one. It's written by Harry Ward McCormick. It's about an old acquaintance of mine called the Bureau Lady. She's a character who's been in West Texas for a number of years. I'm not sure exactly how many, but this story was written in 1976. Here is a picture of the Bureau Lady for those of you who aren't familiar with her. She's been around quite a while, and I really respected her for lots of reasons, as well as a lot of other people did, too. But this story is written, like I said, by Harry Ward McCormick, who is a local from this part of the world. He writes, the winter of 1976 found me in Alpine, Brewster County, Texas. This 11-word sentence could set the stage for admissions, testimonials, adventures of tale. What I offer you is the unpolished truth. I offer these words for their historical value. The heart of my story involves Bureau Lady. I did not title this conversation the Bureau Lady. That seems to make the Bureau more important than the Lady. The Bureau is part of the picture that helped in identification. The Bureau was a companion and a travel aid. I gained this information through observation. She did not tell me this. I do not lessen the importance of the Bureau. I just feel that the lady would be the same without it, standing alone. I met her at a roadside park on Highway 90 between Marathon and Alpine near the Fort Stockton turnoff. It was a cool fall day. Traffic was light, and I was busy casting bullets. I was a dormitory resident at Sol Ross State University, and such practice, casting bullets, were not allowed in the dorm. I would take my Coleman stove and other related implements to the park and crank them out. This did not help my GPA at Sol Ross, but it did keep me supplied with bullets, a valuable commodity. As I ladled molten lead into my bullet mold, a Lyman 454424, I saw her from the west riding down the highway shoulder on the south side of the road. As she passed between me and the fence behind us, I spoke a generic salutation. Might have been howdy. She responded with a chin dip nod, but did not speak. She continued to the far side of the roadside park and dismounted. From the angle of my casting table, I could observe her and the bureau without appearing to stare. They ignored me, and after a while, she had the bureau situated and her plunder neatly arranged on a ceramic picnic table, cement picnic table. Presently, she started walking towards me. She walked chin high with a normal stride and shoulders very erect. I remember that even on the gravel path of the roadside park, her steps made not a sound. She immediately spoke as she reached my location. Thought that's what you were doing. Yes, it is. I can lose myself in the repetitious rhythm and go anywhere my thoughts lead. She said, that sounds, the sound of your tools took me back a long way. I had an uncle who cast bullets and fishing weights using a rid that looks like yours. She asked me, do you melt down wheel weights to cast your bullets? I acknowledged that I did. Used my chin to point at a gallon paint bucket containing the same on the ground nearby. That was the sum of our conversation. She returned to her bureau and busied herself organizing her stuff. I cast bullets until my stove ran out of fuel, packed my stuff, and drove back to my dorm at Sol Ross State University. I had heard of the bureau lady, and people say that they had seen her. I'd never heard anyone say that they had talked to her. She was, and her memory is, a treasure of the high desert. 
pretty much a mystery to the casual observer, as she should be. I'm glad that I had bullet casting as a means of escaping academic pressures. And I'm glad that that blue old lady had an uncle. End of story.